It carried no missiles, no cannons, not even a single defensive gun. And yet, this aircraft became one of the most feared and untouchable creations of the Cold War. For years, it slipped past Soviet radar as if it were invisible, outran every interceptor, and shrugged off any missile fired at it. They called it the Black Arrow, a machine so advanced that even its enemies admitted it was nearly impossible to surpass. Many believed nothing like it would ever take to the skies again. But now, something new is emerging on the horizon. An aircraft so ambitious it could eclipse the Blackbird itself, the SR-72, a hypersonic ghost said to be the fastest, most dangerous reconnaissance platform ever conceived. What exactly do we know about it? And why is the Pentagon being so secretive? Let's break it down. Intelligence gathering has always been the backbone of national security. You can have the largest navy, the most advanced missiles, or the most powerful air force, but without precise, up-to-the-minute information on threats, you're flying blind. Modern surveillance relies on a combination of satellites, signal interception, and cyber espionage. But one of the riskiest and most daring methods has always been aerial reconnaissance, especially when the mission means entering airspace, where you are very much not welcome. Unlike satellites that follow predictable orbits or drones with limited range, reconnaissance aircraft can punch through enemy defenses, gather detailed data almost instantly, and adapt their flight path. In real time, dot, in the 1960s, a jet appeared that pushed technology to its breaking point, the SR-71 Blackbird. It combined the holy trinity of recon flight, blistering speed, extreme altitude, and the ability to outrun every missile in existence. To this day, it still holds records that seem untouchable. Take its 1990 New York to London dash, just one hour, 54 minutes for over 3,460 miles. Even the Concorde, the fastest passenger jet in history, would need nearly an hour more, and a Boeing 747 would take more than triple the time. But all that performance came with enormous costs. Literally, the SR-71 demanded astronomical maintenance, budgets, highly specialized crews, and constant support. With the Cold War winding down and the Soviet Union gone, Washington lost interest in funding such an expensive platform. By 1989, most Blackbirds were retired. NASA used the last few as research aircraft until 1999, when the Blackbird officially left the skies. Recon missions were split between satellites and UAVs, and any idea of reviving the SR-71 was quickly shot down. The Air Force wouldn't pay for it, and drone manufacturers feared it would kill their own projects. But the 21st century changed the game. The battlefield was no longer defined by two superpowers. Now there were flash conflicts, hybrid wars, and unpredictable threats where speed and timing were everything. In some cases, satellites couldn't deliver data fast enough, and drones couldn't reach far enough. Aerial reconnaissance needed a rebirth but this time, it had to break the hypersonic barrier. Rumors of a successor began in 2007, but they stayed in the shadows until 2013, when Aviation Week in Space Technology published details from Lockheed, Martin's legendary Skunk Works. The report described a hypersonic SR-72 demonstrator, 60 feet long, similar in size to an F-22 Raptor, with a single engine capable of sustained Mach 6 flight. The public reaction was explosive, and in 2017, the magazine revisited the story hinting the program might be further along than anyone thought. One witness claimed they saw a small, unmanned aircraft, escorted by two T-38 Talon jets, landing at Lockheed's Plant 42 facility in California. Lockheed declined to comment. And it's worth noting that Boeing and Northrop Grumman also test prototypes there. So whatever was spotted may not have been the SR-72 at all. Dot at the heart of the SR-72 is its propulsion system, a turbine-based combined cycle, or TBCC, engine. This hybrid blends a conventional afterburning jet engine with a ramjet or scramjet, switching between them as speed increases. Turbojets excel below Mach 3, but beyond that they overheat and lose efficiency. Ramjets and scramjets can handle Mach 5 or more, but they can't function at low speeds. By combining the two, the SR-72 could take off from a normal runway, accelerate to hypersonic speeds, and strike anywhere in enemy territory before defenses could respond. Lockheed considered proven fighter engines like the F-100 and F-110 as the turbine core, with a separate airflow path for the scramjet and over-under layout to keep the air moving cleanly at supersonic speeds. If this sounds familiar, it should in Top Gun. Maverick, the fictional Dark Star aircraft, used exactly this kind of hybrid propulsion. That design wasn't just Hollywood magic. Skunk Works itself consulted on the project, raising questions about whether the movie was giving audiences a subtle glimpse of real-world technology. Dot another game changer is manufacturing. As Lockheed's Jack O'Banion revealed in 2018, building such an engine five years earlier would have been impossible. The heat alone would have destroyed it. But with advanced digital design and 3D printing, 
engineers can now create internal cooling channels directly inside the engine structure, letting it survive repeated hypersonic runs without melting down. Meanwhile, the global race for hypersonic dominance has accelerated. In 2018, Russia unveiled the Kinzel hypersonic missile and the Avangard hypersonic glide vehicle. While Ukraine has since intercepted Kinzels with decades-old Patriot missiles, their announcement signaled that hypersonics were no longer a theoretical arms race. They were here. Around that time, Lockheed quietly removed public references to the SR-72, possibly under Pentagon orders to keep advanced programs under wraps. The aircraft's final design will almost certainly differ from the SR-71's. Iconic silhouette, but it will use exotic materials capable of withstanding the extreme heat of Mach 6 flight, likely advanced carbon composites, ceramics, and heat shielding alloys similar to those used in space shuttles and ICBMs, and it may not even need a pilot. Skunkworks is considering an unmanned baseline version with a manned option only if needed. This would remove the need for costly life support systems and allow the SR-272 to take on riskier missions without endangering a crew. The U.S. Air Force and Navy are also working toward a fully integrated combat network, linking future six NGAD fighters, the new B-21 Raider, stealth bomber, and other advanced assets into one coordinated force. The SR-72, with its unmatched speed and reach, would be a perfect fit in that web of capabilities. If Lockheed officially unveils the son of Blackbird before 2030, don't act too surprised you heard it here first. The real question is, can the SR-7 to truly surpass its legendary predecessor? And if so, how far will it go?